What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking summer top water. Should you be throwing big baits, small baits, loud baits, quiet baits? We're covering all the different questions, hopefully the scenarios for you. Let's go. We get this question asked more often than not, you know, which summertime top water bait should I be focusing on? When should I be fishing? Do I need to be throwing big baits, small baits? Should I not be fishing top water at all? So today's video, gonna kind of go over some tips and some things to think about uh, next time that you're out on the water and you want to throw top water. You know, it is summertime. We're getting towards the end of summer now. We're uh, mid to late August. Uh, you know, kind of going through the hottest part of the year, water tips, uh, typically are the hottest of the year. So if you guys have been following along the channel, we've talked about where these fish go. We're gonna talk about where they're going in that fall transition, but uh, the water temps are hot. Your water, your dissolved oxygen in your water is getting lower. It's the lowest it's gonna be all year typically. Uh, these fish are gonna be up in the darkest, thickest stuff in that grass, back behind docks. Uh, so top water, normally, uh, I, I would throw a fast top water, you know, a whopper plopper or a buzz bait, a horny to uh, toad, something that's gonna cover a lot of water so I can cover, I could burn up the shoreline and just fish miles of shoreline and try and get my bait in front of active fish. Well, you gotta kinda slow down. Even though the water temps are up, um, it kinda has that kinda winter effect, if you will, in the very end, the hottest part of the summer. Those fish just kinda, shut down. They don't want to be running around in that hot water. You know, out here we're looking at mid to high 80s on our water temps. You know, that's hot. So these fish are just kind of like, you know, picture middle of the day, you're going to go for a jog, right? No, you're going to you're going to want to stay inside where the AC is. If you're going to go for a jog or you're going to be active, or you're going to play, you know, basketball or football outside, you're going to do it when it's darker out, lower light, early morning, late in the evening when it's cooler. Uh, and then obviously the fish, they're gonna get back into that, that stuff where that water temp is cooler and that's where they're gonna stay. So as far as fishing a top water, if you're gonna be throwing a fairly active, fast moving bait, uh, get out early, get out late, fish evening into nighttime. Don't be afraid to go out at night and throw a big rat or a big wake bait, try and get a big bite. But uh, you know, these fish, they change their, their feeding patterns um, during the heat of the day and during the hottest part of the year. So with that said, there isn't a right answer for which bait should you be throwing. My number one tip for you is just to be different. You know, and that might sound like a lame answer. It might sound like a cop-out answer or just a generic answer, but it really isn't. And, and let me explain, you know, Say I'm fishing a highland reservoir. I'm fishing for spotted bass. You know, everybody and their brother have been throwing some kind of five to six inch walking bait, right? You know, your Rovers, your uh, Spooks, your Vixen, you know, whatever it is, they're all kind of the same size, have a lot of the same sounds. Try going down to a smaller size, right? Just be different. Go to a different size than they've seen. Go to a different sound than they've seen. You know, if you're frog fishing, everybody and their brother is throwing your, your, your 60 to 65 size frog. Change up the size. Go bigger. Look at this. Go bigger. Go smaller. <laughs> right? You guys are frog fishing. Everybody and their brother are throwing the normal size frog. Maybe you need to downsize a little bit. Maybe you need to upsize a little bit. But just be different. I'm gonna get into that a little bit more here uh, shortly. But uh, that is my best advice for you guys. So depending on the type of fishery you're fishing, depending on the type of stuff you're fishing around, are you fishing around grass? Are you fishing around docks? You know, if you're fishing in grass and you're throwing a frog, just be different. Instead of throwing a traditional frog, maybe you need to throw a frog with some metal feet on it, 
a little bit of kicker sound, a little bit of flash, maybe need to be throwing a popping frog. You know, all this stuff. Yeah, let me show you this real quick, guys. I pulled out a bunch of top waters just for this video because, again, it's summer top water time. I have a lot of it. I throw a lot of it, and there is not a right answer, but I want to at least ex uh, explain my thought process, and then you guys can apply that to your fishing. So, number one, be different. Uh, that is that is the the most important tip that I can give you. You know, if everybody in the world is out here throwing the same size frog, uh, throw something smaller, throw something bigger, throw something louder. You guys get the point. Number two, fish low light. If you can fish the cooler water temps uh, throughout the day, you guys are going to have a lot more success with your quicker moving baits. So if you can get out first light, that's when you're gonna wanna be throwing your, your buzz baits. That's when you're gonna wanna be throwing your whopper ploppers, your horny toads, baits that you cast out and you just reel back and just cover water, right? But as that sun gets higher, those water temps get higher, those fish shut down, but they get more predictable. You know, now they're gonna be back in the deepest, darkest shade pocket. They're gonna be back on that deepest, farthest piling up underneath the dock. They're gonna be in that darkest, coolest area. So once you get through that early morning, lower water temps, and now you're high noon and you have the, the sun up, it positions those fish in the obvious spots. That's where you're gonna switch gears to your frogs, your poppers, those types of baits. You know, again, we started off talking about your, your open water, spotted bass highland reservoir deal right your rovers your your vixens your spooks well now now you're going with your poppers you know now you can slow down pick your cast pick you know right here pick the the only cover on this bank that's different i don't know if you guys can see that or not but somewhere over there on the screen i'll move my arm so you guys can see there is a brush pile. I'm not gonna throw my buzzbit out there and just burn it by. I'm gonna throw my, my popper up there. Bloop, let it sit. Bloop, let it sit. You don't have to get super aggressive because these fish, during this high sun, during that heat, they are gonna slow down. So if you're in the grass, that's when you're picking up your frog. Uh, if you're throwing, uh, I don't know. I think you guys understand. Get out at low light, get out with the lower water temps. If you can fish at night, that is an awesome time to throw a uh, top water. You know, look at your moon phases. If you can find a nice cool evening with a semi or full moon with bright moon, those fish are gonna be absolutely destroying top water baits. So uh, if you can, you know, take that into consideration. So we talked about early morning, late evening, your faster moving baits during the middle of the day, you're gonna slow down. You know, just some other things to think about when you're gonna be different. You know, if, I swear, every video there's blow ups around me. It's like they're just teasing me. Um, if you're out there, that didn't really work. If you're out there throwing a double buzz bait, we've talked about this for years, be different. Go with a single, more subtle plastic bait. You know, this is a big, heavy metal, metal blades, really loud, really squeaky, right? This is a really quiet, really subtle buzz bait. Again, just be different. Uh, you know, and like I said in the beginning, this is kind of a, a generic, just kind of a, a lame answer, but it really does make sense if you apply it to your fishery. Now talked about going small right we talked about going small on your frogs you really need to match the hatch I know last year through the end of summer into fall out here on the Tennessee River uh, they were fish they were those fish were blown up on really really small baits and the be, the the best frog hands down for us was this guy right here that little Kyara that is a tiny frog still stout hooks right you're gonna throw a little bit softer rod a little bit lighter braid, but we are matching the hatch. We, we downsized. On the flip side, 
if you can, say you're out there fishing your open water spots, now throw your bigger walking baits. Uh, you know, throw your wake baits. Uh, if you're out here night fishing or you're fishing around big fish, that's where you upsize your top water. That's where you go with a rat or a big wake bait, uh, a big whopper plopper, you know, a 190 size whopper plopper. Uh, you know, just, just be different. Different sound, different size, different time of day. Now, real quick, with that whopper plopper, those of you guys that are subscribers to the channel and, and watch us, our videos throughout the year, you've probably noticed that a lot of our whopper plopper fish this year were on the different size whopper ploppers. You know, primarily, let me look around. I had had some out. Let me see if I can get this thick guy out. Wow, that came out a lot easier than I thought. Um, typically, a whopper plopper, number one size is gonna be your 130 size, right? We had so much more excess this year, success this year on the 110 size. See how much smaller that is? And even smaller than this, the 90 size. The biggest fish that I hooked this year on top water was on a little 90 size whopper plopper. Just being different. You know, this is gonna have that plop, 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 plop sound, that real deep sound. The smaller you go, the higher pitch that sound is, and you're just being different. Again, super lame, super generic answer, but it works. So if you are a whopper plopper fisherman and you love throwing a whopper plopper, just try a different size. Try it. Try a 90, try a 110. You know, if you want to try bigger, go with that. I, I think it's the 190 size, you know, that the big whopper plopper. I've told this story many times. The first time I ever took that out on Clear Lake, you know, the one or the 130 is the the, the size I threw almost 100% of the time. Then they came out the 110. Well, I started throwing that 190, the bigger one. The first three fish on it, I think, were two sevens and an eight. It's just a different sound. Those fish hadn't heard it. So, again, just be different. If you're a whopper plopper fisherman, try those different sizes. I will link uh, my favorite you know, sizes and colors down below in the video description. If you're a walking bait guy, try throwing something a little bit different, a little bit smaller, a little bit different sound, either smaller or bigger. You know, if it's, if it's getting tough out on your body of water, go smaller. If you're looking for a big fish, you just want to get that big bite, go bigger. You know, what else did I bring out? I talked about the rats. Yeah, that's a whole video in itself, the, the rat fishing thing. This is actually, this is that new rat, it's a PB rat. I really, really like this thing. Uh, the way they've, they're injected baits, but their their paint jobs are really, really cool. I think it's in the actual uh, plastic, but very cool bait. You're looking to just get into rats and you want to throw a bigger wake bait. You know, that Spro is an awesome, fairly inexpensive, uh, way to do that. Again, change out your hardware. On these, especially out here, we don't know if we're gonna catch a, a 10 pound largemouth or a 40 pound striper. So uh, number six, owner hyperwire split rings and some 3X hooks on that guy right there. I, I got this straight braid right now, but um, but yeah, again, be different. If, you, if you're looking for that big bite, go out in the evenings, go out at night, throw those big wake baits, and that will be your best shot at catching the biggest fish right now in the summer. And again, as that sun gets high, it positions those fish back in the shade line. If you're fishing those highland reservoirs with big bluff walls, it puts those fish right there on that sheer bluff in that one to you know 12 inch to 18 inch shade line along that bluff wall. It really positions those fish. Uh, don't go blowing by it with a buzz bait or a whopper plopper. Get a slow moving bait in there and just be real subtle with it and you'll be surprised with the big, how big of spots you'll get off of those bluff walls. But again, guys, you know it's, it's a really hard video to shoot because so many fisheries are different. I don't know your situations, but uh, that is the best advice as I can give you is, uh, is be different, change up things, quit throwing the same old stuff you guys have been throwing all year because guess what? Those fish have heard it all year. You're coming into the end of the fishing season. You know, up north, you got freeze, you know, the ice coming. Uh, you know, this right now is the, the fish have, have been fished for more pressure than the entire year. Fishing gets harder and harder and harder as that fish, fishing pressure gets more and more. Hopefully that makes sense. You know, come through winter time, a lot of people fall, a lot of guys 
hang up the fishing rods and they pick up their, their bows and their guns, right? They're going deer season. They're going hunting. Same thing. Right now, it's the hardest time to get bit but don't be afraid to get out there and throw top water. You know, we've talked about where these fish are. We've talked about how to simplify picking the, the, the key stuff on the banks. Um, now it's just as easy as changing up your baits, changing up the size, changing up the color and sound, and you guys will catch more fish. Let me look down at these baits real quick and make sure I didn't, I didn't miss too much. You see the frogs I got tied on right now. That tackle, right? So that's gonna be a low light frog. That's gonna be a frog that covers a lot of water. If I'm fishing sparse grass, just random grass here and there, I wanna, I don't wanna sit there and have to walk a frog through all of it. I wanna be able to cover that water and then move on. But if I'm fishing thick grass, high sun, and I'm fishing like isolated shade pockets, that's where I'm gonna slow down and throw the walking frog, something that doesn't cover as much distance. And again, I'm gonna throw something bigger. That's the Spro King Daddy. Uh, just a lot bigger frog. What else do I have tied on? I have the rat. I got the smaller frog tied on. And then the popper. You know, like I said, if you guys are tired of throwing those fast moving walking baits, try throwing a popper. This is that, uh, that's that Mega Bass Pop Max. And um, that was by far my best treble hook topwater bait out here last year. Uh, trying to get those fish to to get off that off that shad and eat my bait was kind of a struggle but that popper being subtle and slow with it was uh, hands down my best bait out here. But hopefully that uh, information applies to you guys. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section and Matt and I will try to get those as soon as possible and really try to help you guys out. But uh, don't be afraid to get out in the heat. Again, like I said in previous videos, that sun gets up, it really positions those fish on the obvious key locations. You don't have to fish the entire shoreline pick out the deepest, darkest shade that you can find and you guys will find the fish. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're getting right up to half a million subscribers. We're coming in close. I think we're at close to 450,000, which is unbelievable, but a half a million is just mind blowing. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you guys learned something from this video, hit that like button. As always guys, thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Have a good one.